right, so today we're gonna be talking all about Seattle. Love Seattle. One of my most asked questions from you guys is, I'm visiting Seattle, what should I do? Where should I stay? What should I eat? And I'm gonna answer all of those questions in this video. So I'm not originally from Seattle, but I've lived here for about three and a half years now. So I think that somewhat qualifies me to have a local's perspective, local tips for you guys. So I wanted to just make one video talking all about Seattle, my top recommendations, things to get you out of downtown. That's like my number one tip. Most people when they come to Seattle, they stay downtown, they see the Space Needle, they go to Pike Place Market, classics, and while downtown is great, and there are definitely some things that I think are worth seeing there, the best places, the best views, the best restaurants, everything in my opinion is not in downtown. So there's a bunch of surrounding neighborhoods and I think they're considered towns within the city of Seattle. So there's Ballard, Fremont, Capitol Hill, Green Lake, Queen Anne, Lower Queen Anne, Magnolia, there's tons. Those are the areas most people live, most people chill, most people go to coffee shops, eat, walk around. So we're gonna talk about everything. What I would recommend if you're coming here and then you can kind of narrow it down based on what you think you might wanna see the most. I love Seattle so much that if anyone is visiting Seattle, I want you to have like a true picture of what Seattle really is because I know the first time I came to Seattle, I didn't even know anything existed outside of downtown. Like I thought that was Seattle. I really want you guys to have the best experience possible if you come to visit Seattle and hopefully you fall in love with it like I did. So when I was in Europe a few weeks ago, I actually wrote out all a shit ton of notes. There's like a novel here of things that I want to mention to you guys in this video. So I really thought this out. It's kind of like categorized. Get ready to take some notes in case anything sticks out to you. I'm gonna try and have most of these things linked down below or written down below so you can refer to the description box too. So if you're excited for this video and you enjoy while you're watching and you find it helpful, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. If you're new here, you can join the Bayrito family and subscribe. I upload every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 6 p.m. Pacific time. I typically do makeup videos, but I also do some travel content, vlogs, and here we are, Seattle, Seattle videos too, apparently. <laughs> Seattle is a huge transplant city. For those of you who don't know, Amazon is based here, Microsoft is based here, Starbucks, Zulily. Seattle's a huge tech city. Tons of people from San Francisco, Silicon Valley are moving to Seattle, have moved to Seattle, especially in the last few years. So it is a huge booming tech city. There's tons of jobs in Seattle. People are moving here from all over the country. For me, I feel like that's kind of a cool part of Seattle. It's chill and it's still PNW. Uh, I can't believe I just said PNW out loud. I usually just type that on Instagram. It's it's still part of the Pacific Northwest and it has that chill vibe. But then there's also this other vibe of startups and tech and just people going at it, doing their thing. Weather, let's quickly talk about weather. I actually wasn't even gonna plan on touching on this, but I feel like I need to because people think it rains like 24 seven in Seattle. I have lived in other parts of the Pacific Northwest that were so much worse. Here we get sun. It does rain quite a bit, but it just depends on the year. I would say July, August, September, I think are usually our like sunniest months and it can get pretty hot. Fall, I think is the best time to come, like October when the leaves start changing and it's not quite the rainy season yet. This year we had such a pretty fall. It was sunny almost every day. It was warmer than usual and the leaves were changing and it was just perfect. You come in the winter, it's not bad. You just will probably have rain. It'll probably be pretty gloomy. If you bring an umbrella, you'll definitely be a tourist. So first thing we're gonna talk about, if you're coming to Seattle, you need to figure out a place to stay. So if you want to stay in a hotel, most of the hotels are downtown in Seattle. There's some really nice hotels. They can get pretty pricey. You can use Hotel Tonight, which I've used in other cities where you can actually get like half off on a lot of hotels if you book it that day or if you book it a couple days in advance. If you want a hotel recommendation for something that is pretty affordable, mid-range for Seattle prices and hotels, it's just pretty easy to access different areas from. I would say go with the Hyatt House. Well, not the normal Hyatt, but it's called Hyatt House. It's literally like right below the Space Needle. So if you request a room on that side, you'll probably have a killer friggin' view of the Space Needle. My parents have stayed there before. It's a really nice hotel in a good area. If you're going to Seattle for a splurge, like an anniversary or a honeymoon or something, I would say stay at the Edgewater. It is right on the water. 
couldn't tell by the name. It's a beautiful hotel. They have a really nice restaurant right on the water. But if I were to travel to Seattle, I would definitely stay in an Airbnb. There are some awesome Airbnbs in great locations. I would say stay in Capitol Hill if you want that more city, lively, nightlife kind of feel. That's where most of the bars and stuff are. It's very close to downtown. It like connects to it. Ballard and Fremont are a little more funky. Tons of good restaurants and coffee shops in those places. There's good farmer's markets, tons of little cute boutiques and shops and that kind of thing. So that would be my advice as far as where to stay. So now on to how to get around. Do not rent a car in Seattle because parking is a nightmare. Traffic is also a nightmare in Seattle. The best way to get around, in my opinion, is taking Uber Pool. Uber Pool is essentially like carpooling with Uber, but you pay a lot cheaper than you would just for Uber. Just budget that into your travel expenses or whatever because it's going to be a lot cheaper than renting a car. You won't have to pay for parking. You don't have to park. It's quick. It's easy. Seattle Public Transportation, you can also take bus. We also have a light rail thing, but Seattle Public Transportation is pretty bad. We're working on it, I think. Or if you can, walk or bike. Another thing that I started using in the summer is the bike shares. So there's a few different ones, Lime Bike, Ofo, uh, can't remember what the other ones are called right now. I use Ofo, it's just what I have always used. You just download the app, you unlock it, and Ofo I'm pretty sure is free. I've never actually paid for an Ofo. I don't know how they make money. I'm guessing they have some kind of permit or something with the city. And if you just want to like explore some of the areas I'm going to talk about too, using something like Ofo is a really good option because it's pretty much free, if not free, and it's just fun. All right, so moving on to views slash things I just think you have to see if you visit Seattle. Obviously, the number one thing that Seattle's kind of known for, I feel like, is the Space Needle. Well, the Space Needle is really cool to see, and I think it's something that you obviously have to at least walk up to, even if you don't go up. But what I would recommend is skipping paying to go up the Space Needle and instead go to Columbia Tower. Columbia Tower is in downtown Seattle and it is a huge building, huge skyscraper. It's actually taller than the Space Needle. The view is insane. You just go all the way up to the top, the observatory level, and you do have to pay, but it, I believe it's less than the Space Needle. And it has a 360 view of Seattle. So you can actually see like Lake Washington, Mercer Island, Bellevue. You can see other areas. And I feel like that's a really good way to kind of get your bearings. You can kind of see how everything connects. That's something I would definitely recommend doing on your first day in Seattle. One of my favorite views, if not my favorite view, is from Cary Park in Upper Queen Anne. Cary Park is only like a 10 minute Uber ride, I would say, from downtown. Like if you're doing Pike Place, you could easily Uber or walk up to Cary Park if you wanna work out. It's a huge ass hill going up to Upper Queen Anne. I believe it's where Sleepless in Seattle was filmed. I'm not a movie person, so I've never even actually seen that movie. I should probably do that. But it has a killer view. Cary Park, there's always tourists there. If you wanna be at the tourists, go early. If you don't care about that and you want the best view possible, go at at sunset. It is insane. I'm crossing my fingers for you that you get to go to Cary Park on a clear day because the most insane view is when you can see Mount Rainier, the huge mountain. So hopefully you can plan it to go to Cary Park when there's like a nice clear day. The so next spot is Golden Gardens. It's actually not a garden. I definitely thought it was a garden before I went there. It's a beach right on the water. There's some hikes that you can do around there. It is beautiful to go to in the summer. If you're visiting in the summer, definitely go to Golden Gardens. I even think in the winter or the fall, if you're visiting, it's still such a beautiful spot that I think is worth going to. And there's a cute little like hot chocolate kind of place right by there. So if you just wanna go when it's cold and get like a hot chocolate and then walk along the water. We do have beaches in Seattle. There's also one in West Seattle, Elkai. Gasworks Park is probably my second favorite view after Cary Park, a huge grassy hill right on the water on Lake Union. If you're coming in the warmer months, you could bring like a picnic and chill out there. There is a poke place that I would highly recommend if you're into poke, it's called 45th Stop and Shop. It's like a total hole in the wall place in the back of this convenience store. It always has a line wrapping around the block. That's how amazing it is. You can get that there and then walk down to Gasworks Park and eat it at the park. So Pike Place, I obviously have to quickly mention. That's the famous market that everyone knows. You see the fish flying, you can get really cheap flowers there. Pretty much the only reason why I ever go there now is just to get flowers if I need them for something. If you are already around there, Alibi Room is really fun for drinks. The gum wall is right by there. While you are downtown, the Ferris wheel on the Seattle Pier I actually think is worth it. It has a really good view, especially if you're doing it again at sunset or at night. If you're into museums, the Chihuly Glass Museum is probably my favorite in Seattle. Also Discovery Park. It's not really a park, it's huge. It's basically an area where you can bike, hike, 
there's a lighthouse right on the water. I usually go there and do like a couple mile walk to the lighthouse. Again, you could also bring like kind of a picnic lunch there and sit on the sand by the lighthouse. If you're trying to like take some photos or something, it's a good photo spot right there. It's super pretty. If you're here in the summer and you have an extra day, I would say take the ferry to Bainbridge Island. The view from the ferry when you're going away is like the famous shot that they always show on Grey's Anatomy. It's really weird living here now after watching that show for so long. Bainbridge is just a really cute, tiny little quaint place. There's some good breweries there. There's some wine tasting. You can bike around. It's just a good little like day trip away from Seattle. Those are my must-see views. So I have a lot of information here on bars and brunch and food. I'm gonna talk about that next because I feel like that kind of like coincides with the areas because usually when you walk around an area, you go into little shops and you eat. So let's start with brunch. Seattle's a big happy hour and brunch city. So in the summer for brunch or for any meal, I would recommend Westward. It is right on the water in a different area. It's not downtown. If you want a good rooftop for brunch, Terra Plata is great. The food is okay. I wouldn't say as far as brunch food, it's like the best food, but the atmosphere is really nice. It's also right across the street from the new Starbucks roastery which I actually think is worth seeing, even if you're not a big coffee person or something, it's just pretty cool. Since Starbucks was born here, it's right across from Pike Place, the first original Starbucks store. And like I said, the Starbucks headquarters is here. So they have this roastery that was the first one. I'm not sure if there's any in other cities now, but a couple years ago, they opened it in Seattle. Bastille's in Ballard is one of my favorite brunch places. They have a huge outdoor patio that even if you go in the winter, they have big fire pits and heat lamps and stuff outside. And I think it's also like closed off. So you can go any time of the year. Really good food, really good atmosphere. If you go during the Sunday market, is Ballard on Saturday or Sunday? They have a farmer's market kind of thing, so it's fun to walk around the farmer's market and then go to Bastille's. Lola is like one of the places that you'll find probably if you're looking on Yelp. Keep in mind, Seattle is not a foodie city, I wouldn't say. Portland is much more of a foodie place. Don't get me wrong, we have some great restaurants, great food places, they're just a little bit harder to find. Anything that's recommended on Yelp has been horrible. So I honestly would not follow Yelp. I would ask for local recommendations. Biscuit Bitch and Portage Bay are like two classics. So those are my brunch recommendations. If you're in Seattle, let me know of any other places down below. Always on the lookout for a good brunch. The Fat Hen is actually really good too. Let's move on to just food in general. So like I said, Seattle is a huge happy hour city. You can get a lot of really amazing deals on happy hour food, clubs and bars and stuff. Close at 2 a.m in Seattle super early so you kind of have to start your night earlier which is why I think a lot of people do happy hour and then you kind of just go to a bar and then start your night there since it does end so much earlier than a lot of other cities so probably my favorite restaurant in Seattle happy hour or no happy hour is list in Belltown go there for happy hour if you can because you can literally get like under ten dollar gnocchi steak salads really good food for literally under ten dollars it has a really cute moody kind of like date atmosphere but you can definitely go there with like groups of friends and stuff it's a fun place black bottle which is also also in Belltown has really good vegetarian food. Even if you're not vegetarian, I'm not, and they have really, really, really good veggie dishes. One of the best meals I've ever had in Seattle for dinner is Rock Creek amazing food. It's on the nicer end, but it's not like super, super pricey. It is a nicer dinner. So, you know, Seattle, we don't really ever dress up. Like people go to nice restaurants and like North Face is here. So you really don't have to worry about that. Local 360 is pretty good. The food is a little bit different. The atmosphere is really fun. That's a good brunch place too, but also for dinner. And it's right on a street where there's a lot of little bars and stuff too in Belltown. The best burger in my opinion is Eight Ounce, which is in Ballard. They might have a couple other locations, but Eight Ounce Burger in Ballard is is so good, so good. Good milkshakes, great burgers. I actually get their veggie burger there because it is amazing. Ballard, you could definitely go to Golden Gardens for the sunset, eat dinner at eight ounce, and then walk around that area. So if you're going to Seattle for a celebration of some kind and you want a fancier, nice, nice dinner, Canlis, I think is considered like the nicest. I haven't been there yet. Gotta wait for the parents to come back in town for that one. It's really fancy, apparently has a good view. My personal favorite is Ray's Boathouse. It's like a nice steakhouse kind of place. You have to be a little bit dressy for that one, but it's right on the water, really close to Golden Gardens actually. I've had great food every time I've been there. So you just ate, you're feeling good. Let's move on to bars and things to do at night, a night out on the town. So one of my favorite bars, which I guess you could go to for dinner and I think they have happy hour and stuff too, is Zigzag Cafe. 
It is downtown, but it's in this really cool, kind of like in the middle of a stair thing going down. Really cool atmosphere. If you don't want like a rowdy bar and you just want somewhere to get a drink, and maybe get a dessert or something, zigzag is really fun. So there are a bunch of speakeasies in Seattle. And one of my favorites is called Bathtub Gin & Co. It's by Pike Place. Part of the fun of going to a speakeasy is figuring out how to find it and get in. So I'm not gonna tell you. It's a really fun atmosphere if you wanna go to a speakeasy. Needle and Thread is another one. There's a bunch of them. You can just Google Seattle speakeasies. When I first moved to Seattle, I was like all into the Capitol Hill scene, going out, going to the one club there, going to some of the bars there. And I'm just not really into that anymore. It's not really my scene, but if you want that, Capitol Hill is a place to go. Now, if I go to Capitol Hill, I really like the garage. If you're into pool or bowling, that's a fun bar that has those two things. One of my favorite places in Capitol Hill is Capitol Cider. Really fun cider place, go downstairs. That's where the fun like bar area is. Two rooftop bars, M Bar is really popular. It's in South Lake Union, which is where Amazon is based. So a lot of like Amazon people go up there for happy hour and stuff. Definitely go for happy hour because the prices are pretty up there. I personally like Frolic. It's downtown on top of a hotel and they have like the really pretty string lights and fire pits and stuff and it's just a good spot to get a dessert or drink. Sometimes they do like little concerts and stuff up there. Ballard and Fremont are a good place to go for just like get a beer and chill. It's not like the same kind of scene as Capitol Hill. In the summer, Fremont Brewing is awesome. They have tons of like picnic tables and stuff outside so you can sit outside. If you're trying to go clubbing, like I said, Seattle's not really a big clubbing city, but if you want to dance, a place that I would recommend in Capitol Hill is Rhino Room. If you like rap, they usually play good music. Also, Ballroom in Fremont is really fun. I do feel like the crowd is a little bit younger, but you never really know. It kind of just depends on the night. I'm losing my voice. I'm talking so much right now. So looking at my notes, I think that was everything I wanted to touch on. So I hope that was helpful for you guys, and I hope your trip to Seattle is amazing and you fall in love with it as much as I have. Seattle is just a really good combo of having city, water, outdoorsy stuff. You can drive to the snow. It just has everything, and I feel like when you step outside of downtown, hopefully you can really see that with some of these recommendations. And if you do go to any of these places, I would love to see you tag me on social media. I'm gonna put my handles in right here. If you wanna see what any of these places look like, definitely follow me on Instagram because I post tons of Seattle photos. So if you enjoyed this, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. I love you guys. Thanks for watching. See you in my next video. Bye. Uh-huh. Oh. <laughs> oh, wow, what a big pile. <laughs> Try more than like five leaves. Yeah. <laughs>